Ćao drugari, dobrodošli na kanal Slobodan Zone Balkan. Ovom prilikom imamo jedan kratak webinar sa Meglom koji je inače vlasnik Global Sor Summita u Hong Kongu. Naravno, taj summit se održava dva puta godišnja i govori se najviše o prodaji na Amazonu. Svakako to se govori također i o ostalim e-commerce biznisima kao Shopify, naravno eBay itd. Ovom priliku govorimo nešto više o uvozu robe iz Indije i odabiru popularnih produkata za prodaju na Amazonu u USA-u. Naravno govorimo također i o sourcing agentima, transportu robe i naravno certifikatima itd. Sve ono što je bitno za vaše kvalitetno postovanje na Amazonu ukoliko se odlučite da vašu robu, naravno nakon svih ovih tarifa koje je Trump uvojao kinezima, ukoliko se odlučite da vaše produkte naravno uvozite iz Indije. Tako da uživajte! Hey Megla, can you please tell us something more about yourself and also about more info about sourcing uh, uh, good quality products of, uh, from India? Hi Red, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Yeah, so um, maybe I should just share my screen and start the presentation and yeah. you know, we'll talk about sourcing from India and I've got a couple of slides on um, you know, my, like what I do. So let me just quickly share my screen and... Let me know if you can see yes. the PowerPoint. Yes, yeah, we can see it. Okay, cool. All right, so today I'm going to be talking a little bit about sourcing from India for e-commerce sellers specifically. So here are the topics that we're going to be covering. Uh, you know, why should e-commerce sellers consider sourcing from India? How is it different from sourcing, uh, you know, from China? What kinds of products are available? And I'll also share some tips for effective sourcing and then give people um, you know, some ways to start sourcing from India immediately. And yeah. then I'll also talk a little bit about the sourcing trip that I'm organizing to India in October. Yeah, okay. I, saw, I saw that that you are uh, also having this uh, kind of uh, sourcing trips from India, but I hope that I will join you in the, in the next couple of them. Because yeah, I, that, that'd be really I was interesting. part of the Canton Fair, but now I, it will be for sure definitely interesting to join also for sourcing for in, uh, from India. Yeah. yeah, I think especially considering the tariffs uh, that have been imposed on, you know, Chinese made products, I think a lot of e-commerce sellers are exploring alternative markets in view of those, uh, uh, you know, the tariffs and all. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So a bit of background, uh, you know, on me. So I've worked in the sourcing industry with global sources uh, for about 19 years now. And... Um, I have uh, actually uh, worked in India, the Philippines. Um, I worked in China. I lived in China for about 10 years and I'm currently based in Singapore. And uh, I've also been doing a lot of events for e-commerce sellers. So Rad, as you mentioned, I've yeah. organized, um, I'm, I'm the organizer of Global Sources Summit, which is uh, a conference for e-commerce sellers in Hong Kong. I've also done a lot of research reports uh, on products that are manufactured in China. So when I was based in China, we used to visit a, a lot of factories and write about how products are manufactured and what are the things that importers need to keep in mind when they are sourcing products from China, what affects price, what's, what affects quality. So I visited hundreds of factories when I was there and that gave me a good understanding of you know, how uh, production and manufacturing and exports really works. And then I've also visited a lot of trade shows over the years. Um, I sold on eBay and I'm currently selling on Amazon as well. And more recently, I've started my own venture where, uh, you know, I'm organizing a sourcing trip to India and also a community for sellers in Asia called the Asian Seller. So here are just some photos. Um, you know, this, these are the kinds of research reports that I have written. So health and personal care was one of them, gifts and premiums from India. Uh, we covered all sorts of industries, electronics, home products, hardware. And these are some of the trade shows that I've attended recently. So this is the Global Sources trade show in Hong Kong. This is the India show. Uh, and of course, I've been on a lot of podcasts and webinars as, as, uh, as well. So basically, I talk about sourcing. That's my speciality. Yeah. Okay. So let's get into why source from India. 
So one of the main advantages that e-commerce sellers have sourcing from India is that there are a lot of unique products available from India that are not available from other countries. They're usually and, handmade, right? Yes. So a lot of the products are handmade and there, there are very specific crafts that are mm-hmm. unique to India that you won't find in other countries. So I think that is, uh, you know, an advantage that e-commerce sellers will find here. And these products are you know, typically more higher end, they're higher quality, they can command higher prices because they're handmade, there's a higher perceived value. And, um, you know, there are also, um, um, also, you'll stay under the radar of a lot of the, you know, black hatters on Amazon, because, uh, uh, right, a lot of these black hatters, they like to go after highly competitive products, like, you know, power banks, or silicone yeah. spatulas, yeah, or things like that. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but if you're if you're selling these products that are, you know, more premium, they're higher priced, they're potentially higher profit margins, um, but they sell in lower volumes, right? Mm-hmm. They're they're low volume, high profit kind of products. That so uh, that isn't of interest to, you know, I, I think the Chinese, most of them are from uh, China. Less, in fact. less work, but more profit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So um, also you'll find that a lot of these products are very attractive and eye-catching, which I think is great for e-commerce. So when you have, uh, you know, let's say a user is scrolling through search results on Amazon and uh, they, they see this very attractive, colorful product, then they tend to, they'll tend to stop and, you know, they, it'll stand out from amongst all of the other products uh, that are out there. So I think that's one advantage as well. Yeah. Another advantage you'll find is that uh, for for most product categories, um, you know, especially the ones that are handmade, suppliers will accept low minimum order quantities, and this is actually a big challenge for um, for e-commerce sellers when they source from China because in China a lot of the production is done on, at a very large scale, so suppliers don't typically want to deal in smaller quantities yeah. because it just doesn't make uh, economical especially sense. For private labeling. Yeah, exactly. Especially if they need to make some modifications uh, in the product. But in India, you'll find that, um, you know, typically the MOQ is about 200 to 500 pieces. And of course, they want higher order volumes because, uh, you know, they they earn more uh, if the order volumes are higher. Um, However, they're also very willing to uh, do trial orders of as low as, you know, like 50 pieces. There's 100 pieces as well. And that, I think, is very advantageous for e-commerce sellers if they want to test a product or if they are new uh, to selling on Amazon and they don't have a lot of investment. They just want to start with with something small or, you know, they have a, lo- a small budget to start with. I think that will be an advantage. Of course, this doesn't apply to products like textiles and garments because those products typically have higher MOQs. But other, you know, like home decor items, Um, home furnishings, for example, uh, those kinds of products will have low MOQs. Okay, another advantage um, I see is that um, there are a lot of locally available raw materials in India. So for example, cotton, silk, jute, marble, metal, wood, bamboo, leather, all of these materials are found abundantly locally. So therefore, the the prices of products made from these materials are quite competitive. In fact, Mm -hmm. India is the world's second largest producer of cotton. Um, so you'll find a lot of cotton, um, you know, products, for example, cotton fabrics or, uh, you know, apparel, um, furnishings. So India is actually very competitive in natural materials or products made from natural materials. Yeah. Um, whereas China would be more competitive in products made from um, you know, man-made yeah. materials. Yeah. Right, right. Okay. Another difference or another advantage I see is that I feel that typically Indian suppliers, especially suppliers that are more export focused, they have more respect for IP. And, uh, you know, they themselves invest in R&D and, and design development. Um, and they, they understand the importance of protecting a buyer's designs. Yeah. Whereas, you know, in China, you'll find that, um, they will very readily copy designs or, you know, they will, um, uh, you know, either sell your <laughs> design to another <laughs> buyer <laughs> or something like that. But I found that in India, especially the, you know, professional and export focused suppliers in India, of course, I have to point out that there are a lot of different types of suppliers 
And, uh, you know, you want to make sure that you deal with the export focus suppliers. They are, they tend to be typically more professional and they are the ones who will, you know, uh, respect your IP and designs a little bit more. But Chinese, then, are so, Chinese are so funny. Last time I had experience, I asked yeah. them, can you please show me some uh, work, previous work from some other sellers? And they show me even the, the, the printing card, thank you card, the packaging design, everything they send me, you know. <laughs> but if you ask them, can you protect my design and everything, I say, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> but you see, you see original, they're sending uh, also your design to someone else, you know. It's, it's, they're just used to sell it. So even if you yeah. make a contract with them, like a master contract, you know, you're not protected because under small amounts of money, you will not go in uh, front of the justice to, to suit them, you know? So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I totally agree. But I find that in India, there's more respect for IP and product, uh, you know, the product designs. And, um, you know, if, if a buyer has uh, signed an agreement with them, then they yeah. tend to respect that agreement a little bit more. And I then totally you'll agree. also... Yeah, I, I had experience with India because I was used to work few years in India market there with uh, other company from USA. We used to sell uh, beauty products in India and that was okay. for us the fir first market to test about natural beauty products. It was hard, hard as hell, but we make yeah. it. They, you know, they don't, you know, that is, that is the reason I, I, I have a lot of knowledge about mentality of Indian, how they, how they are uh, dealing a business with you and uh, they used to work on more on trust than anything else. If they like you, they want to do it. They will do everything for you to make you happy. You know, if you, if it just, you need to be nice with them. You cannot speak like Chinese. The Chinese usually they, they can be arrogant sometimes, you know, they are hard. But in the end, it's just be soft and be polite and they can make everything for you. Exactly. I totally agree. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, many, many times Indians work with their hearts. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. yeah, as you said, if they like you and if they trust you, if you build a relationship, then um, they will give you better prices, better payment terms, and they will go out of their way to, you know, make you happy. Totally agree. As I used to say that uh, Western people, Americans, they, they invention contract. But uh -huh. Indian people like Balkans before in the history, we used to work on trust. So if we uh, trust you, if you like you, we can do any business with you. But yeah, that's why <laughs> Democrats, Americans, they make a contract. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. themselves. laughs> that's interesting. Actually, somebody in, in our group, you know, in the Facebook group, somebody said that uh, sourcing from China is a science but sourcing from India is an art. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Another thing you'll find is that a lot of the Indian suppliers, they don't sell directly on Amazon. So I think increasingly that's becoming a problem in China uh -huh. because a lot of uh, suppliers and third-party sellers in uh, China, you know, they're selling on Amazon. So uh, sometimes you're competing with your own manufacturer when you're selling on Amazon. But uh, I found that... Uh, most of the Indian suppliers, they're currently not selling directly on Amazon. Um, so, you know, you'll have less competition. Also, another advantage is uh, it's an English-speaking country. English is the second language, second official language. Uh, so communication is smoother. There's less chance of miscommunication, you know, when you're talking yeah. over the phone or, uh, you know, even via email. And then there's no need for translators when you go there either to visit your factory or to visit a trade show. Also, all of your contracts can be in English. If you're signing a contract in China, then it needs to be bilingual. Uh, yeah. But in India, you know, it's, it can be in English. That's not a problem. And in fact, India has a lot of different local languages. And um, each language has a different script. And each state has a different language. So English is actually the language that people within India use to communicate with each other. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. you know. Have you traveled to India, right? Yeah, of course. Of course, I was there in okay. Mumbai and uh, also my best friend, Anup, is from India. Uh, he is a okay. photographer, professional photographer. So, so um, I know a lot of about India. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah, I used to do that. I was a few times there in port in Mumbai. It's one of the biggest uh -huh. port I ever saw. Uh, yeah. They are, uh, India have also that port and I think that, that's the major port for uh, for exporting the products, right? If you are sourcing from Delhi, 
then you're going uh, straight to the to Mumbai, yeah? With the, yes, that's right. That's right. So there is the Nava Sheva port in Mumbai. That's the largest port, and uh, most products would go from there, especially if you're sourcing from the north or from the west, which is Mumbai. Mm. If you're sourcing from the south, then the ports are uh, Chennai, mm -hmm. um, and there are some other ports as well. I was there also uh, in, in Goa and also Sri Lanka, close to this part oh. of the Indian Red Sea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Goa is a very happy kind of city, right? They have a lot of, uh, <laughs> they have beaches and, and parties yeah. and all going on there. So. <laughs> like, uh, like European country in India, in part of, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's got a lot of Portuguese heritage. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, it was like, own, uh, you know, it was ruled by the Portuguese. <laughs> yeah, that's why. That's why all the, a lot of, they're familiar with, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so another advantage, you know, you'll find is that uh, there are no Trump tariffs on India products uh, as of now. Not so yet. I think uh, <laughs> not yet. Exactly. I said that's why I said as of now because you know you never know what will happen tomorrow. <laughs> he's forcing but, uh, buyers to buy from USA. That's why he's doing this, that. You know, there. Uh, yeah. I, but I don't think so. That something will change with India in the couple next next years. They have a good connection from the history, so they're supporting yeah, India a lot. Yeah, that's what I think too. Uh, I mean, India and US have good relations overall. There was one recent trade issue between the US and India and, uh, um, you know, some product categories from India were actually had preferential access uh -huh. um, to the US market. They could be imported into the US without any duty. And this was an agreement that was made with the U.S. and a lot of other developing countries in 1976. It's called the Generalized System of Preferences. And um, in June of this year, the U.S. removed India from that list of preferential countries. So now there is like a 4% import duty on you know, these products that were previously, uh, that did not have any duties previously. And that's the only that, uh, thing. Sorry. Which kind of product? What, what category is that? So um, most of them were like industrial category, industrial products, mm -hmm. automotive products. I think there were some like uh, maybe bags and, uh, uh, you know, apparel, those kinds of products. But by and large, like the home decor and all of the other categories that e-commerce sellers would be interested in, those are not covered, uh, you know, by this, uh, by this issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let's quickly talk about India versus China. What are the basic differences? One of the things that you'll find is that in India, as I mentioned, a lot of the production is smaller scale and handcrafted. Although for a lot of industries, there are a lot of, uh, you know, large scale productions as well, like automobiles, apparel, fabric. Um, but typically the products that e-commerce sellers would source, like home decor, home furnishings, those are mostly smaller scale kind of products. Whereas in China, of course, you find there are all types of factories and, uh, you know, especially there are a lot of larger automated factories. And then, as I mentioned, there's more respect for IP in India compared to China. Uh, one of the drawbacks that you'll find is that there are fewer product categories that India makes, whereas in China, you'll find that you can practically source any and every product, right? Uh, for example, India is not very good at electronics. Yeah. Uh, it's mostly for home products or, uh, you know, apparel, soft goods or furniture, for example. But um, yeah, so that's one drawback. Another thing you'll find is that for India, there's not a lot of information available online on how to source from India, whereas for China, there's so many blogs and YouTube videos and experts going to China and talking about how to source from China. But, but we, I, will change uh, that. we will change that with your videos and with your info. <laughs> in India. Yes, that's my mission. <laughs> yes, of course, and I will support you. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. But, and I also think that this is an advantage for people who uh, would be willing to make the extra effort to learn how to source from India because the, the barrier to entry is much higher, right? It's easy for everyone to start sourcing from China. They can just go to Alibaba, search for a product, place an order, and it's done. Whereas in China, the learning curve is a little steeper, so there's less competition because not many people want to uh, you know, go through the learning process and, and try this, try something new. So I feel that people who will start sourcing from India now will be at an advantage. 
Another thing that you'll find is that um, logistics providers are not very familiar with FBA requirements as of now. Yeah. Whereas, in, whereas in China, you'll find that you know, almost everybody is familiar. Even suppliers are familiar with FBA requirements and labeling and all of those things. But India is where China was maybe um, you know, three, four years ago uh, in terms of FBA. It's only now that e-commerce sellers have started sourcing from India. So now suppliers are kind of, uh, you know, getting familiar with FBA requirements. Yeah, but you can train them as a, as a seller if you have... Exactly. Then you gain more trust. If you want to help them, they will help you back for sure. Exactly. Definitely. Yeah, that's what I found too. Like there's this one seller from Australia, uh, Margaret Jolly. She's one of the coaches on our India sourcing trip. And she's been working with this one supplier for almost two years and she has trained them and she's taught them how to do the labeling and everything. And whenever she gets feedback from Amazon, she'll, you know, send the feedback to them and then they'll improve the product based on the feedback. So yeah, you can work with the supplier as a partner. Another thing you'll find is that the infrastructure in India is not as developed, whereas China, the infrastructure, the roads, the ports, they're very efficient and very developed. Um, so, you know, just be aware of this, that there might be some hiccups. Um, for example, when it rains, you know, in the monsoon season in Mumbai, the roads get flooded and sometimes flights get delayed or, you know, ships are canceled or, or stuff like that. So you just got to make sure that the that you have um, some extra lead time incorporated into your, you know, production cycles when you're sourcing from India. So that's something you just need to be aware of. Um, you also find that in India, the labor costs are still lower, whereas in China, they are higher than uh, India and they are increasing. And in fact, this is one of the reasons that a lot of, uh, you know, retailers have been moving out of China, even before the tariffs and everything happened, um, especially, you know, like apparel manufacturers, uh, uh, shoe manufacturers like Nike and all, they have been establishing plants in countries like Vietnam and India for quite a few n number of years now. And one of the main reasons driving that change is the rising costs in China. Yeah. Um, another difference you find is that both countries have very large domestic markets and they have very fast growing middle classes. However, um, India is relatively easier to sell to because of the language. I think there are you know, I say relatively easy than China because China, you'll see that the language itself is, you know, a huge barrier. Of course, the Indian market is not easy to sell to in terms of, you know, there's a lot of price competition. If you sell on Amazon, there'll be a lot of returns and, you know, there are challenges. But in terms of, um, you know, the language, I, I think that's one biggest advantage that you have. And there's, there's Amazon in India too. So if you have your Amazon listings, you know, in the US, then you can also consider selling in India. Um, and of course, there, there are um, specific guidelines that you need to follow to open an Amazon India account. For example, you have to have a local company, you have to have a bank account and all of those things. But once you've, you know, got those things set up, then it's a very large and fast growing market that, um, uh, if you start tapping into it now, um, it will pay very high returns in the future. And in fact, Amazon is pumping in a ton of money in India right now, and it's trying to dominate the market. There's another marketplace in India called Flipkart that's owned by Walmart. Uh -huh. So basically, <laughs> there's Amazon and Walmart that are fighting it in India. And recently, I was reading that Amazon is, is planning to um, you know, take over another large um, company that has uh, an online marketplace and also physical retail stores. So, and that's, that deal could be worth billions of dollars. And if that go pushes through, then Amazon will definitely be the market leader, uh, you know, in terms of uh, online and maybe even offline retail in India. So got to look at that, that aspect as well, not only sourcing, but selling into India as well. You mentioned, so, uh, you mentioned that uh, India, they are not good in producing electronics. Yeah. But right. That means that they are good buyers for electronics. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. They are good buyers for electronics. They, they demand. buy a lot, but also returns are also big. In, uh, I, I hear yeah. from some of the sellers that they had issues with the returns. So you need to, to take care to give really quality of the product to not have uh, big returns. Exactly. And Indians, they like to have good deals. So you'll always have to, you know, like 
run special offers or discounts or you know offer competitive prices yeah they buy more of the quality than the than brands yeah yeah that. definitely yeah. right so this is um, a table of you know compa- comparing production costs in China Vietnam and India and uh, this is from an article that Gary Huang wrote um, Gary Huang is from this website called 8020 sourcing and he's uh, uh, you know into China sourcing and all so um, there was this cost comparison done by um, Procon Pacific um, and where you know they said that okay if China is zero percent then Vietnam is minus 11% in terms of production cost but China was minus 37% compared to China so in terms of you know wages um, and you know everything else they they compared everything else and then uh, they thought that China India was way cheaper than China and this is for bags of course, of course it varies from product category to product category I mean this is just you know one example okay so um, I want to talk about the types of products that can be sourced from India so first is this is the biggest category home decor and gifts And these are mostly, again, made from natural materials like metal, wood, ceramic, jute, cotton, glass. Uh, there are also a lot of home, kitchen, and tableware products. So you'll find like stainless steel, cutlery, um, you know, water bottles, uh, cups, mugs, those kinds of things. Furniture, a lot of wooden furniture. And in fact, wooden furniture or wooden products um, exports from India is increasing because there's a very high tariff on wooden products from China. So I'm seeing a lot of e-commerce sellers who, are, who were sourcing wooden products from China. They are moving their wooden products to India now. So that's something to consider. Yeah. Uh, there are also a lot of furnishings and made-ups like cushion covers and rugs. Um, very interesting, you know, like carpets also. Um, there are rugs made of jute and cotton. So very interesting designs. Um, fashion jewelry apparel, accessories, some footwear, and then textiles and apparel like cotton, denim is pretty big, silk and wool. Leather products is also another very fast growing category. And in fact, uh, there are now, you know, like um, bigger factories that are manufacturing leather products as well. It's not only the small or mid-sized factories. So you'll find that more suppliers are investing in expanding their production capacity and upgrading their um Uh, their equipment and their capabilities. So leather, again, is very fast growing from India. There are some sports equipment like cricket, tennis rackets, footballs, um, eco-friendly products. This is another fast growing product yeah. category. And in fact... Uh, There is now also in, in Amazon USA, a lot of people are searching for eco-friendly products. Yeah. Right, right. And I saw that there are these, uh, you know, these disposable tableware like disposable yeah. plates cups and all that are made from sugarcane waste so they're very eco-friendly they're biodegradable and um you know they're not made from any type of plastic materials they're they're healthy as well those are really popular in fact there's this one factory in delhi that we might be visiting when we um go to delhi for the india sourcing trip in october And they have a huge factory with like 1 million uh, units capacity per, per day or something like that. So it's like a very fast growing product line. Um, another thing to consider, you know, if you're adventurous, the food items like tea, coffee, spices, rice, lentils, beans, these kinds of products could also be sourced. Yeah. You had a good presentation in a Global Source Summit last time when I was in April about this eco-friendly product. That was one uh, uh, young girl speaking about, it was the daughter, I think, of Stephen King of, or... Uh, C.J. Rosenbaum, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> she had an amazing presentation in, uh, about eco-friendly, well, the young people who are buying uh, more eco-friendly products. Yeah. Exactly, and I think that's... They are the future uh, buyers, so they are the future buyers, so if yeah. you need to focus on the young population if you want to grow your business in the next couple of 20 years, 30 years, they're coming. Yeah. Totally, totally agree, yeah. yeah. So this, uh, this is just a map of the different types of fabrics that are available in India, and this is one speciality that you'll find, that each region in India has its own unique type of fabric that has you know, different textures, Uh, different types of embroideries, different patterns. 
and I, th- I think that there's huge opportunity to uh, play with these fabrics. You know, um, there, there's so many different products that can be made from these fabrics, like furnishings or, uh, you know, aprons or, or apparel or, or garments or bed sheets, bed covers, table covers. So a lot can be done with these types of, uh, you know, different types of fabrics. Um, okay. So I want to share a few tips for effective sourcing. So this is something that you touched upon previously. And this is just so important when you're sourcing from India. So focus on relationships. You got to build trust and build a relationship with your supplier. You will get better terms and, you know, priority treatment. Also, have a good understanding of your product so that you come across as a serious buyer. They will tend to, um, you know, take you more seriously if they know that uh, you're likely to and and you have an understanding of of the product. I say to people, explore your product, you know, explore. If you don't don't know exactly, you know, you can go to the biggest brand on the internet like uh, North Face if you're buying a, a bag. And explore mm-hmm. about material, explore about everything. They have the product details. Copy that and speak with the fabric. You know, and then they will take you seriously. Especially about material. If you, if you know how to, which type of material is better, and what can can they source that for you? And they see that you are uh, taking serious about your business, and uh, yeah, they're willing to help. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, and the other thing you can do is if you don't know anything about a product, you know, of course, one, you can go to the bigger sites, but you can also go to some suppliers and ask the, you know, the, the dumb questions or the very basic questions. And then once you have an understanding of the product, then you go to the supplier that you really want to target and that you really want to source from and then talk, you know, like intelligent <laughs> stuff with cool. him. You know, but I used to do it like this when I speak with people. I used to ask dumb questions, not because, it, more because I want to see how they treat me, you know. Ah, okay. Also the fabrics, if they treat you, if they want to scam you, you know, uh-huh. or if they want to help you, they will give you, correct. they will correct you and speak really nice with you. But if they want to, to screw you, <laughs> that's a good also. Yeah type of the tactics to, to, to see what, what, what you get, which type of fabric is that, how serious they are to, you know, to give you the, the, the best service. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point as well. Also, uh, you got to work with your supplier as a partner. You know, I think that really works in India. Like I was telling you about this Australian seller, Amazon seller, who's sourcing from India. And uh, she always gives feedback to the supplier. And she says that, hey, look, you know, this is the feedback that I'm getting on Amazon. And let's try to improve the product. And they work together to do that. Don't always negotiate excessively for low prices because I mean the supplier needs to make a profit too you know let yeah. them do their they business cut from as well. the quality so it's uh, exactly <laughs> yeah they will, they cut will do everything to make you to make a deal but you need to take care of that you're not uh, a winner if you cut the price they cut the material <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> you think that you've got a good deal, but then when, you, when your customers get the product and you get a one-star review on Amazon, like, oh my God, this is what happened. <laughs> Especially what if happened. you're doing your bags, you know, if they cut, if they're, it's like from uh, uh, the, the PVC, you know, you have different type of material, but if they cut, you know, that comes visible, you know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then there are other things like, you know, if you place repeat orders with a supplier, then of course they will, uh, you know, trust you more and give you better payment terms, make your payments on time and, you know, visit the factory. I think that just this face to face interaction is so important, whether you visit them, uh, you know, at a trade show or you visit their factory, uh, you know, once you have that face to face interaction, then it's just so much more easier to work things out and, you know, understand each other better and this is uh, I think applicable for any business dealing right it's just uh, uh, it builds a better relationship when you when you talk to a business partner face to face Uh, also little things like you know wish them on festivals and ask about their families and just kind of build a a rapport with the suppliers and that will help you in the long term of course also note that hierarchy is important in Indian culture so usually you know decisions are made at the highest level either by the owner or um, 
you know, by a, a manager if they have been given the authority. So if, if there are important decisions to be made, for example, if you want a uh, price, um, you know, if you want to negotiate the price or anything like that, then always talk to the owner of the factory. Um, also, face-to-face -face inter introductions are done according to rank. So if you are introduced to a group of people, then they will usually introduce the most senior person to you first, um, or they will, uh, you know, either by rank or by age. So just keep that in mind as well. They also like to respect, you know, the, the respect our elders. Um, also, you got to be respectful when you're sourcing or when you're dealing with Indians, because similar to China, they also have the concept of losing face. So you don't want to, um, you know, criticize anyone publicly. You want to criticize in private and praise in public. You know, that's the kind of uh, yeah. attitude that you want to have. Of course. Yeah. Another thing you'll find, and this is the challenge, is that suppliers don't like to say no. And this happens in China as well. Um, and, you know, if you ask them, can you make this product? Oh, yes, we can do that. No problem. And then later they'll go figure out how to manufacture the product or how to, uh, you know, make the change in the product that you're requesting or, or anything because they want to keep all options open and they want to make decisions based on specific circumstances. So if, for example, they don't make the product in-house, they'll go look for another factory to manufacture that product or, you know, they'll make it happen. They're eager for your business, right? So one of the things that um, people should do is ask very specific questions. Specific questions for, yeah. yeah, for example, if you want to order a certain quantity and you're not sure if the supplier has the capacity to manufacture that much, you know, don't just ask, oh, can you give me 5,000 pieces? You know, just ask what kind of machines do you have? What kind of setup do you have? Uh, how, how much can that one machine produce in a day? How many workers do you have? Um, you know, how many shifts does each uh, do you run? Can you run a uh, night shift as well? And things like that. I mean, try to dig a little bit deeper to uh, uncover their, you know, the real situation. And um, especially if you're placing a largish kind of order, it always helps to visit the factory to see what's really going on. You know, whether you're sourcing from India or China, I think uh, it's, it's applicable to, to both countries. It's also good for the people who don't understand the culture of India and that uh, when they say yes, like if you do like this with a hand, that can mean also no. <laughs> if they do like this, that, that means yes, but in Europe means no, you know. Uh, for me, it was difficult at the beginning to understand <laughs> also. But my girlfriend is from Bulgaria, and they used to say this, uh, to do the same. You know, if they do like this, that means yes. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, it's different between different regions. So yeah. what you said right now is mostly for south of India. South of right? India, yeah, exactly. South India, they, they have this like <laughs> handshake, like this. <laughs> Bangalore also, uh, some people from Bangalore. Yeah, Bangalore, yeah. But you won't find that in the north. Like, I'm from the north, so we have like, this is no and this is yes. But you know, yeah. south is more like... <laughs> new, not, new times, not, I was thinking that I make a great great deal with, uh, in sales. And <laughs> when they do like this, you know, I was thinking, <laughs> yes, yes, I make it. But it was totally opposite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's funny. laughs> okay so i also want to give you some tips on how to start sourcing you know in case somebody's uh interested and they don't know where to start so here are actually some ideas so first of all uh, you can search for suppliers on alibaba global sources or india mart these are the three main websites there are there's also a couple more like exporters india and all of those but these are the three main websites now note that for Alibaba and Global Sources, most of the suppliers are from China, but you can use a supplier location filter to search for uh, India suppliers. They do have some India suppliers, but of course, uh, you know, not as many as uh, the Chinese suppliers. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is that all of the suppliers or most of the suppliers on Alibaba and Global Sources are export focused. Yeah. So they will understand the requirements for importing countries. Whereas India Mart is a local supplier directory and a lot of the suppliers there are actually also selling into the domestic market. And you'll find that there are a lot of wholesalers and trading companies and, uh, you know, importers. And it's, it's very difficult to find actual exporters on India Mart. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, I was recently talking to somebody on India, uh, from India Mart and asking them, you know, why don't you have more exporters? 
it's because they are trying to focus more on the domestic market. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that's just something to keep in mind, but they do have a large database. And if you are patient and if you can do a little bit of vetting, you will be able to find some good exporters on India Mart as well. Yeah, and then, you know, these are some sourcing agents. These are vetted sourcing agents. These are people who are coming with us on the, on the India sourcing trip. In case anyone's interested, you know, you can reach out to these people. Um, they are based in India. They are, I have spoken to each person. I, I know them personally. And, um, you know, they understand FBA requirements as well. For example, this logistics company, Sea Air Online, um, they are now very familiar with FBA requirements. They also have a warehouse in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So in case you want That's to good. split your shipments to different uh, Amazon you know, warehouses, they can do that as well. That's good. Also, here are some resources in case people want to, uh, you know, get more information. So there's a free ebook that people can download at this link. And I also have a group for uh, people who are interested in India sourcing. You can join that group as well. Okay. I will put this link uh, uh, in the description. People can find it in below in the description on YouTube. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I just want to spend a couple of minutes talking about India sourcing trip in case uh, anyone's interested in attending. Of course. So this is basically a very unique learning, sourcing, and cultural guided tour to the Indian Handicrafts and Gifts Fair in Delhi. So this fair is uh, basically one of the main export fairs that, are, uh, that is held in India. It has about 3,000 exhibitors. And uh, we are basically going to this fair. And apart from visiting the fair, we're also going to be doing a conference uh, before the fair to uh, share with people all different aspects about sourcing from India, like, you know, how to select suppliers, how to vet suppliers, how to do quality control payments, everything. So it's a full one day conference, um, you know, done by experts who share all of these different aspects related to sourcing from India. And then we visit the fair. And then at the same time, you know, in the afternoons on the day that we visit the fair, there are more presentations about various aspects. So the trip dates are October 14th to the 20th. That is in and, uh, Yes, it's in Delhi. Yeah. So these are some of the product categories that can be found at the fair. Again, these are, uh, you know, mostly handcrafted products or gift products. So I won't go through the list, but these are, you know, most of the product categories that India is, uh, is uh, competitive in. So why attend this India sourcing trip? First of all, the biggest advantage is that you can source products that other Amazon sellers don't have access to. Because um, you know, most there there aren't too many sellers sourcing products from India yet. Also, Indian suppliers they don't update their websites very regularly, so you won't find their updated product catalogs on their websites, and they will usually launch products at trade shows. So trade shows are really the only way to see these new products. Or if you already have a relationship with them, then they will email the late, their latest catalogs to you, or or the, their latest photos. So that's one thing. And the second thing is that we are also providing, as I mentioned, a crash course in sourcing from India, because I, as I realized that there's not a lot of information available about sourcing from India online. So we're covering all the different aspects related to sourcing uh, from India. And, you know, this information will allow you to source any product from India, not only the products that are available at the, at the trade fair. Yeah. And then, you know, just, just have fun with like-minded sellers, network, and you, you get the opportunity to talk to each other and learn from each other. We've got sellers from, uh, you know, the UK and Australia, Singapore, um, New Zealand, Vietnam, US. So just, uh, you know, sharing experiences and learning from each other is, uh, is really important. Uh, the space is limited, Merla, uh, for the sourcing trip. Do we have yes. a little space or, yeah. Yes, right. Um, so apart from that, you know, I'm also um, offering some cultural programs. So for example, we visit the Taj Mahal and we'll also, uh, there's also a cultural dance show that's performed for the group. These are some of the coaches who are going to be traveling with us. So there are some people from the U.S. and some people who, who are experienced uh, with, you know, sourcing from India. There are about 10 coaches uh, from India and the U.S. Uh, okay, so here's, in, here's the website. Okay. And yeah, as you said that uh, there are 30 spots total and 27 spots have been taken up already. Okay. So there are currently about three spots left, um, you know, in, in case anyone's interested. So they can, you know, send an email to info at indiasourcingtrip.com. What is included in the sourcing trip? Uh, is it together with, uh, with the hotel or with... Uh... 
Yes. So everything is included. Hotel, meals, transportation, SIM card, cultural show, uh, visit to the trade shows, guided tours to the trade shows, Taj Mahal, everything. It's an all-inclusive price. So all you need to do is pay for your airfare and visa. And you need to arrive at the Delhi airport on the, sp- on the start date. And then from there, we'll pick you up, take you to the hotel. And after that, everything is taken care of for, uh, you know, you. attendees. For, visa, for Serbians, we don't need visa to come in, uh, in India. That is good. And for other oh. countries, I'm not so sure from Balkan, but it's usually like $40 or something is to pay for visa. It's not so expensive. It's something like that. Yeah, it's, it's not expensive. And for most countries, you can apply for a visa online. Of course, yeah. And it's like issued in uh, a couple of days. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mila, thank you for this really interesting information, amazing presentation. You cover everything. But just <laughs> one more thing what I wanted to ask you, it's about the shipment and uh, the vehicle. We also can use the DDP in India, right? So if yes. you want to ship the products from, from the manufacturer, so how is that covered, you know? It's like if it's if it's far from Delhi to Mumbai, is it possible they to pay like a part of the shipment and then we to pay from, from the port to USA? Absolutely. So just like in China, you know, you have different options. You can either take an FOB price from the supplier uh-huh. or you can do DDP. But one thing to note is that in India, mostly you'll have to have your own logistic service provider, um, you know, to deal with uh, all of the logistics related issues. So like in China, sometimes you can let the supplier manage the logistics for you. You know, they have their freight forwarders and they'll take care of everything. But in India, suppliers prefer that you have your own logistics company. So, you know, you work with a logistics company and depending on your situation, depending on the order quantity, uh, you can decide which uh, type of, um, you know, uh, lo- freight you want to do. Like, do you want to do uh, air shipment or do you want to do ocean or do you want to do courier, um, you know, or DDP and FOB, like whatever works for you. So all the different options are available. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so, you know, of course, if they need any more information about that, they can join to your group on Facebook. It's also from India, right? So they can Definitely. ask and they can get a good uh, directions from you and uh, from your team. Yeah. And also I want to point out that in terms of prices, you know, uh, we found that uh, shipping from China and shipping from India to the U S or to Amazon FBA is about the same. So it's not, uh, you know, maybe a bit high or low depending on the seasons. Cause of course there's uh, you know, seasonality affects the pricing, especially if you're shipping by ocean, but by and large, you'll find that the pricing is about the same. Yeah, yeah, they usually don't charge by the distance or something. Uh, what people used to think about it, they're charging by the by the distance. Now they charge. They have on any the other the other rules on the uh, how they charge you when your goods comes to USA. So it's uh, totally right. Yeah, it's the same. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, Megla, thank you for for uh, amazing uh, interview and thank you for all these informations. I hope to see you next time in uh, Canton Fair in, uh, in, in China because I, I, I think that I will go there. <laughs> if not, I will join you for, uh, for sure there in the Global Source Summit uh, in September, I hope now. Uh, October, yeah. October, October yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fantastic, yeah. That'd be yeah. great. <laughs> thank you very much. We stay in touch. Okay. Thank yeah. you so much, Rad. Uh, bye. Bye-bye. Nadam se da ste uživali. Ukoliko se odlučite da se pridružite, naravno, uh, sourcing trip iz Indije sa Meglom Dragom, naravno imate u deskripciji discount kod od 200 dolara, samo koristite kod znači Radule 200 i imate popust od 200 dolara da se pridružite ovom sigurno kvalitetnom putovanju i sourcovanju produkata iz Indije. Nadam se da ste uživali svakako, ukoliko imate neka pitanja ostavite u komentarima, naravno lajkujte, šerujte, a mi se čujemo u nekom od narednih učenja. Sve najbolje i prijatno!